You don't ask for a lighter rucksack, you build up stronger shoulders. That's the metaphor that you have to live by. And when you get good at doing hard things, it makes life a lot more rewarding. You don't get any reward out of easy stuff. Embrace the suck, it's gonna be terrible. We, we built a company around showing people what they can do. Push them, challenge them, lead them. At that point, that became the brand of Go Run. happened, those towers fell, and it, it comes back when I think about what it felt like to watch that go down. And, you know, I just knew what I needed to do. And so that was one of those instances where life, life gave me the answer. And the answer was correct, and I needed to go serve my country. I wanted to be the guy on the tip of the spear that was making the most difference that I possibly could. So Special Forces, that seemed like a, a good place to do that. Yeah, so in, in 2007, I was in Iraq. My wife, Emily, she was in the CIA. She was in West Africa, a town called Abidjan. When I went there, I didn't have a lot to do. So I, I focused on what I knew and the way of life that I was leading coming back from war. You know, some home improvements. And I'm not talking about hanging pictures. I'm talking about base fortification type stuff, right? So we were trying to get creative and think, what, what can he do that uses his skill set? And, and I, I built her a go bag or a go rug. We're gonna put extra bombs. A pair of running shoes. Extra supplies. Uh, extra cash, documents. Extra radio equipment. Some food. To put in the back of her, her car. In case there's a coup, which they love a good coup in Africa, right? It can happen like that. And so that was the inspiration and it led to the creation of, of our first Rucksack GR1 a mere two and a half years later. I'd, I'd come back on a, on a one-way ticket home. My, my marriage was in the crash and burn phase of its existence. Don't start crying yet, right? Like, I remarried the same girl after we got divorced. She's awesome. But at this stage, it was a one-way ticket home. You know, I'm going through divorce. I don't, I'm not in the military anymore. You know, we're at one stage fighting over the dog. It was just miserable. Then I'm in business school, trying to hide my past because I'm ashamed of it. You know, weird stuff, right? Transition was hard. And, you know, I'm crashing on my buddy's couch on the, the Lower East Side in, in Manhattan. And I put an ad in Craigslist, New York City for a quote, backpack designer. And how this team in Montana found me based off of that is just one of life's mysteries. This was when the economy was terrible, the financial crisis was in full swing, all of that. And, and they were trolling for work because they had been let go from this backpack company that they were designing for in New Zealand. Sometimes you get a lucky break. And so they reached out to me and said, hey, this is what we can do. And they did it for very little money. They really educated me on what it would be like to design and build and what is manufacturing like. I don't know how to sew. Sewing, it's not, so you have to find the subject matter experts who can guide you through that process. That took a couple years. You know, now it's easy to say, oh, a couple years, right? At, at the time, it was excruciating. You know, I'm going through divorce. I don't, I'm not in the military anymore. It, it was just miserable. What really eventually made sense was I created an event called the Go Ruck Challenge.
this forced me to get out and lead a bunch of people on this event based on special forces training. And next thing I know, he's launched an event and it's out in San Francisco. It was this proof of concept. Let me show you the type of abuse that we're willing to put it through. I remember flying out to San Francisco and I did a route recon. I really had no idea how this was gonna go. And it's a different, you know, it's the Wild West. He brought a bunch of bricks, he made us separate and put them in our rocks and... You know, we're just gonna kind of make it suck, right? We'll make it suck for the gear too, because it's about the pictures. So we'll, we'll show them rolling around in the dirt and do all sorts of that kind of fun stuff. What amazed me was that there were two Marines that showed up, God bless them. And they showed up with a 30 rack of Bud Light. Then they start stuffing the beers in the rucks. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, we're good at this stuff. I'm like, you don't even know what this stuff is. They were just so confident and smiling and happy about it. And I just gravitated towards that energy. It was one of these things that, it was a pretty intense experience. But at the end of it, I just told him, oh yeah, it was easy. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. And inside I was like, if he ever puts me in that water again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him. That became the vibe. A good positive experience, but I didn't know how to define positive. And they defined positive for me. So that was, that was really cool. And then it was just how do you scale that? And so you find the right people to do that. And it just kind of caught on like wildfire. People were in fact looking for Fight Club. You know, I've, I've gotten several notes from, from veterans over the years. Like, I was gonna kill myself, but I found this community of, of people and it gave me a reason to get out of bed at a time when I needed to get out of bed. It, it doesn't get much better than that. And those team events is what's so important because it doesn't matter throughout life, you'll always operate better as a team because it brings all of them together and focuses them on a problem and you can get so much more accomplished as a team than you can as an individual. This is a special forces style mission. We are training the trainers. We are showing them how to do it and we are inspiring them. And then we're just getting out of their way. We think Americans uh, on whole can, can learn from the special forces lifestyle. Situational awareness, physical fitness, well-being. It's really, really inspiring to see people take that on and the way that they pay it forward, whether it's fundraisers for someone who has cancer or it's, it's bringing a community together for kids' cancer or whatever the case may be. We just see this a lot and that just warms my heart. And I think it's cool and I think we need to inspire the next generation to serve. And in this generation, and the generation in, in, in front of us, right? We all owe more, we can all do more.